Hey, it's Trix! Welcome back to my channel! I recently posted a YouTube short about being a Satanist and I got a lot of comments of you guys curious about exactly what I believe in. So I wanted to make a video about that today, but before we get started, I wanted to thank you guys so so much for 50,000 subscribers. That is insane. I never thought that I would get this far with YouTube. It was so hard to reach a thousand subscribers back before YouTube had the short form content and now, now that they have it, I have been blessed with 50,000 of you and we are just growing every day. So thank you so, so much for supporting me and thank you for subscribing. Another quick thing I wanted to add before we get started is it's my birthday today. I am 23 years old and that actually adds to why I'm posting the video on my birthday about Satanism. So Satanism is a very individualized religion. It is all about the self, taking care of the self, worshiping the self. You are God. You are the most important person in your life because you control your life, you control all of your choices, everything that you do affects you, you know? So the Satanists most important holiday is their own birthday. So that's why I'm posting this today. So I have looked towards different forms of Satanism throughout my journey. I started being a Satanist in my sophomore year of high school, so roughly about eight or nine years ago at this point. And I first became a Levian Satanist, which is the first form of Satanism that's ever existed. Now, I will do a history video on Satanism in another time, but for now, I'm going to just go through my beliefs and my journey. So picture this, you're an edgy, emo, sophomore, teenager, and you are just fed up with the overbearing Christian supremacy in the country and the so-called separation of church and state, and you just want to be different. So you're like, hail Satan, you know what I mean? I'm totally different from you guys. I am the opposite. Leave me alone. Like, I love horror movies. I love dark stuff. I love the devil. Like. He's just misunderstood, you know? So I was just wanting to be different and my both my parents are atheists, so I was free to explore whatever religion I saw fit, which was really great. And I was like, let's look into Satanism. Let's see if this is a real religion. That would be so funny because if it is, then I'm totally a Satanist, you know, depending on the beliefs. You should always look into a religion's beliefs before just blindly following them. You should always know exactly what you believe in, know exactly what you're getting into, know exactly what you're following before claiming you are a part of a religion. All right, so the vain Satanism. We will go over the nine satanic statements and 11 rules of the earth. And there are some sins with the vain Satanism as well. I will not be going over those specifically, but there is a whole list of them on their website and that will be linked in my description as well as the satanic temple, which I will get into a little later in this video, and learnreligions.com. There are a lot of different branches of Satanism. I will try to go over all of those in another video as well. So if you are a different branch of Satanist, feel free to submit your information about your branch so I can get all the information as accurate as possible. So here are the nine Satanic statements. Basically, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence, represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams, I'm not going to read all of them because you can do that yourself, but I really like all of these statements and I found them to be really valuable and true to what I believe in and it aligns with myself and who I am as a person. The ninth one is my favorite because it says Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had. He has kept it in business all these years, which I very much believe in. I personally don't feel that you should have a religion or way of life based out of fear and based out of like fear of sinning and fear of displeasing someone that you've never met or someone that you don't even know exists, you know what I mean? But that's just my beliefs, of course, if you were a Christian, nothing against you. Um, in fact, my specific branch of Satanism, we don't hate Christians, we just hate Christianity and see you guys as like victims of manipulation and brainwashing and stuff like that. I also really love the 11 rules of the earth from the Church of Satan because the first one is do not give opinions on or advice unless you are asked. I struggle with this one a lot because I cannot have a conversation with somebody and just be like, oh, sorry, you're going through that. That sucks. Like, I have to give solutions because if I personally am reaching out to you, that's because I'm seeking advice and I want solutions. Like, I feel like really weird showing compassion and like just saying oh sorry that happened to you like that just feels really fake to me i don't know so i struggle with that um but it's really good to just keep in mind you know um 
Two, don't tell your troubles to others unless you're sure you want that they want to hear them. Like, obviously not everybody's in the right headspace for you to be venting to them. And always just make sure that that's a safe space for you to do so. Okay. I also love, you know, respect other people's houses. Like, kick people out if they are bothering you in your own house because it's your house. You have a right to who's in your house. Um, five, big one, consent. Consent is important with any intimate setting. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. Um, don't complain about anything that you did not subject yourself to. Like, if you put yourself in a situation, you can't really complain about it because you did that to yourself, which I fully agree with. Obviously, you are you have a right to your feelings, of course, which is why I'm not a um, Church of Satan Satanist anymore because a lot of it is very much like... I don't know how to explain it, but it's very much like... I felt like I was like better than other people and nobody's better than anybody. Um, so I was not a Church of Satan follower anymore. And I learned some not so interesting facts about the followers of that branch. So I also left that branch for that reason. I also love number nine, do not harm little children for obvious reasons. Cause you shouldn't harm little children. <laughs> um, don't kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for your food. I personally am against trophy hunting. I think that is the weakest and most egotistical form of existing. And there's no reason to kill animals unless you are attacked or for food in my mind. Don't bother anybody. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. That is a very big um, thing in Satanism, you know. But as said before, it is very individualized. We won't all have the same beliefs, but we do have rules that are very much just moral beliefs like don't harm little children and don't think things that don't belong to you. But like I said before, I eventually did not like the branch of Levain Satanism anymore and it just made me feel kind of icky. Plus I learned some stuff about it that I did not really like. So I looked into the Satanic Temple and these are their tenants, which I love as well. Now mind you, I am not a Satanic Temple follower or Church of Satan follower anymore, but I still agree with the tenets and the statements and all of the general beliefs because they are still good. That's why I consider myself still a Satanist because a lot of people will say Luciferians are different from Satanists, but it is a very individualized religion. So I like to integrate all of these beliefs into one, which is why I still call myself a Satanist. So the Satanic Temple is very political focused, as you can see freedoms and justice are mentioned, as well as the tenant about being pro-choice. They have pushed for a lot of um, anti-abortion laws to go away, they have advocated for religious freedom when it comes to abortion, and they have even gone against the Supreme Court on some issues because if we are allowed to have the Ten Commandments as like a monument or um, a stone, I don't know the word for it, at one of the government buildings, why can't we have a, um, a statue of Baphomet? You know what I mean? Like, we have the freedom of religion, so we also have the freedom from religion. You know, we should have a complete agnostic, atheist country and should just allow anybody to believe what they want and we shouldn't push or have a supremacy of any religion. All right, now let's get into the Luciferian beliefs, which I consider to be called spiritual Satanism because in around 2018, I had to go to the hospital for two weeks and it was horrible. I was in the ICU. I had five IVs in my body. I did not shower. I did not take care of myself. I had the nurses take care of myself. Like, I couldn't even, you know, bathroom stuff, you know? So that was a very rough time in my life. And after that, I had like a spiritual awakening where it's like, I don't want to live how I live anymore. I want to get a job because like staying in the house is the equivalent of staying in this hospital, like stuck, bedridden, not doing anything, having other people support me. Like I want to support myself and take care of myself and heal myself because you know, everybody's been through things. I've been through things. So I need to pick myself up and heal from them and figure out who I am and figure out my life and everything like that. So I had a spiritual awakening and I stopped being a member of the Satanic Temple because, again, some icky stuff with them. Not really a fan of, but if you want to learn more about the Satanic Temple, there is a documentary called Hail Satan, question mark. Um, I believe it's on Netflix or Hulu, but you can find it online and figure out what streaming service it's on. But it's really good, really interesting. And 
I, I liked it, you know? I like the Satanic Temple, but I am not really a fan of organized religion or organized churches of any kind because there's always that risk of bad stuff being in them, and I've seen it in the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan, so I'm not a part of any church. I am just me. I just have my beliefs. I just live my life according to these beliefs, and it's just a lifestyle, you know? And like I said, every Satanist is different, so I don't have a whole lot of Satanist friends because like some people, like the Church of Satan followers, they are very much focused on the physical world. They don't believe in magic, they don't believe in like spirituality, they don't believe in stuff like that. It is very much like, we are here, we are this, and that's that. And that's totally fine, you know? You can believe whatever you want, that's just personally not what I believe. And since we all have different beliefs, we kind of just keep to ourselves, you know? At least in my experience, I keep to myself. Here are the 11 Luciferian points of power. Now with Luciferianism, there are some people who believe in Lucifer as an actual deity and they do worship him. But that does not mean that we worship him in the same way that Christians worship God. We do not see the need to worship anything to have a good life or to have a good afterlife. We believe in living in the present moment and finding happiness where we are and just making good choices because if we are happy, that means good choices were made. We also believe in questioning everything. I, like, have always been skeptical. I don't believe a single word anybody tells me without researching about it first. And I think that's just a really good way to live, especially with the new age of misinformation and fake news. Everywhere you look, it is very important to be able to think for yourself and know how to research properly and figure out the facts on your own. Now, Lucifer and Luciferianism is a symbol of, like, the first rebel. He is the symbol of free thinking. He is the morning star. He is the, like, guiding light. And people who do worship him see him more as, like, a teacher or a mutual, and they have respect for him, and see him as kind of like an idol, like, you are the perfect being, so to speak. But not like, I need to worship you and you need to guide me on my path, but more as just, like, you are a person that I keep a picture of to remind myself to keep going, to remind myself to be better, to remind myself that I am in control of my life and everything that happens is because of me. So I really like number five, the fall of Lucifer symbolizes the liberation of the mind from the slave mentality and the courage to explore and master the darkness within. One may not offer the illumination of the morning star without the wisdom of the darkness within. So I do a lot of shadow work in my spiritual practice, which basically is like, in simple terms, you have your shadow self that protects you and has been developing since you were a child and just keeps you safe. And you can look at that and try to like heal it and get to know it and just look at it with acceptance and no judgment. And you cannot reach enlightenment, which is the goal of Luciferianism, without recognizing your dark side. We need to come to terms with the light and the dark. You need to befriend both of them and accept both of them and work with them together because you cannot have lightness. You cannot have light without darkness and you can't have darkness without light, you know? You can't like, and they're not even good or bad. They just are, they're both neutral. They're both things that we need and they're both things that will always exist. There will always be opposites in the world. And instead of trying to shun one of them away, you need to get to know them and accept them and just work with them together. I really like eight, to become your own god, you must have the wisdom and strength to govern and guide your life as if your mind is to survive beyond the mortal body. I love this one because I'm non-binary and I see that in a spiritual way. A lot of people interpret their gender in different ways, but mine is purely spiritual. I just see myself as a soul in a body. I'm not a woman or a man. I'm just a soul that is in this body that happens to have these body parts, this appearance, this voice, this name that I gave myself. But nonetheless, I am just a soul that is eternal and can never die. I just simply move on to another place. I believe in reincarnation, I believe in all of that. Um, I think that that's really interesting, and I really like Luciferianism because it touches on literally everything that I've always believed in. I also like 10. Lucifer represents that the insight that every act, no matter if perceived as selfless, is at its core a selfish act. Because even if you want to help people just to help people, you are still at this core doing it to make yourself look better, to help yourself. Like, even if you don't want to admit that, that's fine. Like, that, again, adds into the shadow self. You could just be like, no, I'm not doing it because of myself. I'm doing it because I genuinely care about people. And it's like, yes, you can acknowledge that you care about people, but you can acknowledge that you are also doing it to make yourself feel better about yourself. You know, that's the light and the dark. You can accept both of them and they both work together. 
And 11, to become a god is to fully understand that you possess the power to create and sustain your path and life and illuminate the light of self-determined potential. You are only as good as the effort that you put in to yourself. You can be as successful as possible if you put the work into it, if you take care of yourself. You have unlimited potential and you need to unlock that and you need to take care of yourself and you need to reach that potential, you know? Telling yourself, oh, I'll never be good enough, I'll never do this, I'll never do that, is keeping you in that lower level of consciousness of thinking and you will never succeed because you will keep telling yourself you're never going to succeed. How can you do anything if you keep telling yourself you can't do anything, you know? Be the little engine that could. And it's very much focused on self-love, taking care of yourself, indulgence with restraint, which I find very important because back with the Church of Satan, it was like indulgence over abstinence, you know, but there are still consequences. You don't want to drink all the time and become an alcoholic. You don't want to become an addict after taking all these drugs, you know, and there is a slingshot effect, which I recently learned about um, from this other creator, which basically means like people who have been restricted from something their whole childhood, their whole life, will have a sort of slingshot effect most of the time. Meaning like if you were never allowed candy as a child, like no sugar, nothing like that whatsoever. Once you're an adult and you're free from your parents, you might buy all the candy in the candy store all the time, only eat candy and rot all your teeth out, you know? So indulgence with restraint and love for the deserving. If someone is not reciprocating your love, your time, your effort, and any sort of feelings towards you, don't give them any attention, you know, move on. So as you can see, indulgence with restraint and love for those deserving can be compared to the nine satanic statements. Although not listed, Luciferians also value science and art, which can be compared to the satanic temple's tenets. Uh, as I said before, I like to call Luciferianism spiritual Satanism because enlightenment is the goal and you can choose to work with deities and practice witchcrafts or other spiritual practices if you wish to. So here is what I believe just on its own. I believe in indulgence with restraint, doing whatever you want but understanding that everything has a consequence, accepting whatever the result of your choices is, science is a fact, art is vital to our species development, loving yourself and treating yourself well, striving for success and being proud of what you accomplish, desire is natural, some people deserve your anger, the earth should be protected and celebrated, ignorance only leads to hatred and stagnation, everyone is God, which I refer to as the universe, I don't work with any deities or worship anything, I see the universe as the collective energy that everything and everyone produces, capable of manifesting your goals and changing the world, everyone is God, which means everyone is part of the universe. Another way to phrase this is as above, so below. Everyone is made out of carbon, we're all made of stardust, stardust is above, stardust is here, as above, so below, we are everything, everything is us. An analogy for this would be like the ocean. We are all individual drops, but we make up one gigantic ocean, one body of water, and a bunch of waves, and a bunch of tsunamis, and we are just the same collective thing. We all may look different, we all may act different, but we are all the same. Another way I mean that we are all gods is that we are all responsible for our lives. We can improve ours by changing our mindset. We can change others by offering a smile or some help. I believe that happiness is a skill, and if you always think that happiness is somewhere else, you will never find it where you are. I believe that gratitude is essential, and I believe in the 12 universal laws, which I could dive a little bit deeper into my spirituality if you want me to in another video. And I also find it good to be skeptical. Like I said before, I don't believe anything anybody tells me without looking it up first. Now, I believe that if you have an open mind, it allows you to be calmer and wiser. Enlightenment was my original goal, but there is more that I wish to achieve. I believe heaven and hell, in a metaphorical sense, are purely just mindsets. Hell would be like ignorance and hate and judgment, whereas heaven is indifference and peace. And that is something that I firmly believe in. Indifference is peace. Why would you spend your time and your energy getting mad about how other people choose to live their lives and how they choose to exist, when you could simply be like, I don't know enough about this to have an opinion. Like, it's whatever. I guess do what you want, you know? That's so much more peaceful than being like, why do they live this way? Like, getting yourself all riled up about somebody else that you don't even understand, or maybe you don't even want to understand, you know? Especially if you don't want to understand them, why are you giving them any sort of anger? Why are you letting them have that power over you? You know what I mean? Don't allow other people to make you angry like that. I have, <laughs> I learned a lot from this book called 10% Happier Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, and a big part that I learned is respond, don't react. So instead of like getting upset with maybe like your partner hasn't called you or something, 
instead of yelling at them, like becoming abusive, whatever, just be like, hey, I noticed you haven't called me. Um, just respond to the situation. Don't just purely react out of whatever emotion that you're currently feeling. So I am a crystal person. I meditate. I work with the moon. I do shadow work. I work with chakras, um, color magic, and candles, all that stuff. Whatever you're feeling, to whatever your feelings towards those are, is fine. I just encourage you to look within yourself and ask yourself why you feel that way. If you have any implicit bias towards me after hearing that, I encourage you to look into that as well. Um, but yeah, those are my beliefs. Let me know if you have any questions. And as I said before, you can look deeper into the different branches of Satanism on the LearnReligions.com website, which will be linked in my description, as well as the Church of Satan and Satanic Temple websites. And I will link the um, 11 Luciferian points of power as well. And yeah, there is a lot of good stuff to look into with Satanism. And I will be doing a video on the history of Satanism and potentially my spiritual beliefs and spiritual practice stuff if you guys are interested in that as well. I have been working on a book, not like a book book that will be published ever, <laughs> but more just for myself because I have a little um, scatterbrain and I forget a lot of things all the time. There's a lot of things going on in my head. <laughs> I don't have room for everything, so I find myself having to look up things a lot to remind myself what I believe in, what I'm doing, how to do a certain ritual, etc. So I just made a book with everything spiritual to just remind myself, but um, yeah, so I'll be probably reading from that if you guys are interested. But thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I know I talk really fast. I can't help it. I try to talk slower. I just have so much to say, not a lot of time to say it. There's just a lot of stuff going on in my head all the time. I'm a very hyperverbal person. I talk a lot. I'm rambling right now. Like I, it's something I gotta work on, but it's just part of me, you know? But thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you've learned something from this video. If I did not teach you anything, I failed. <laughs> I didn't do a good job. Let me know. Give me your feedback, give me your comments, concerns, questions in the area to do so down below. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to learn more or just like my content or even my personality. But um, yeah, bye!